Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to Risky Bitness, and I'm back with another RetroArch tutorial. So there's a few things I wanted to touch on today with RetroArch. The main focus of this lesson is going to be shaders. But before we talk about shaders, I want to really quickly show you a couple of cool options that you can do that are going to help you out with uh, making your RetroArch experience smoother. Like I've said before, the menu is not super intuitive, so it's good to have a quick walkthrough of these things. The first thing I'm going to show you is I'm going to show you how to change your default core. Right now, if you follow my tutorials so far, every time you launch a game, it's probably asking you to select a core. So we're going to change that. We're going to go to Settings, Playlists, once again a little slower, Settings, Playlists, and then all the way in the bottom here, Manage Playlists. Then you can go ahead and select from the menu which playlist you're talking about, which one you want to modify, and then you can change the default core here. So this is really going to help you to launch your games faster and not have to select a core each time. Of course that's optional. If you would prefer, you can select a different core uh, each time you play the game. And here you can also customize your thumbnails. And of course if you go back a couple of screens you have a lot of options here. All of these are optional. Um, I haven't played with them too much, but there are definitely some things that could come in handy. I can already see like allow to rename entries could help if you have something that's not named correctly. You know, how you're going to sort your playlist, things like that. So, something to, uh, something to think about. Now, with all of that out of the way, before we get into shaders, there is one more thing that we're going to have to do. But before we even do that, there's one more thing I wanted to show you. So I want to go back to the main menu real quick. I want to hop back over to settings and I want to go to user interface. And this setting again is optional but it's something that I like to like to do. This pause content when not active, I like to turn that off. And the reason why is because if you don't turn that off, you're going to find that anytime you click on something while you're playing, the game's going to pause. For me making videos, that can be really super annoying. For somebody else maybe who's not making videos, maybe if you're like looking up guides and stuff or you have a web page open on your other screen or something like that, it really gets in the way and it's kind of super annoying. So I like to turn that off. But it's again, like I said, it's completely up to you. It's totally optional. Just make sure that anytime you change anything, you go to settings, configuration, and make sure this guy right here, save configuration on quit, is on. Because if you don't do that, even if you make a bunch of changes to the, to the RetroArch settings, they're not going to save. So make sure that's turned on. That's super important. Alright, now without further ado, let's get to the shaders. Before you can select any shaders, first you're going to have to update them. So from the main menu, you're going to go to the online updater. Now this tool has a lot of uses. You can actually do quite a few things with it. One of the main things that you're going to want to do with this is to update all your installed cores which you'll want to do from time to time when new features or compatibility are announced. You can update your thumbnails, uh, good when you add new games. And of course, these are more troubleshooting things. You're probably not really going to need them. We'll talk about cheats in a future episode. Update databases. I've never done update databases before, and I'm not entirely sure what databases it's talking about. I assume it has to do with the playlist, so I'm going to update that just to be safe. This update overlays, I'm interested in that because remember, we did the bezel project. I wonder if this is something different. And then finally, we have update CG shaders and update GL SL shaders, and we're gonna do both of those. Now the CG shaders we're probably not really gonna use. Uh, it's not something that they recommend using, but the GL SL shaders are probably what we're gonna be using most of. So let's pop into our game here. I just wanna show you, so this is of course Street Fighter 2, I think we all know and love this game, but right now, it doesn't really look very good. I mean, I think it looks pretty good, but it could definitely look a lot better. Uh, now, if you're watching this and you're a real purist, you might be thinking, you know, it looks too good. You know, it looks too nice. Or you, you might want scan lines. You know, you might want to break things up a little bit. Now, if you're somebody like me, who's an enthusiast who really likes to see things running at their absolute maximum potential, and you want to have things look as nice as possible, you're probably thinking this doesn't look good enough. But there are options for both of those schools of thought. So let's pop in to the main menu here. And in order to enable the shaders, we're going to have to go to the quick menu, 
and then to shaders. So once again, real, real slow, quick menu, and then shaders. Now, by default, the setting will be turned off. So you're gonna turn it on, and then it's gonna give you these options. Now, we're gonna do this the easiest way possible. So we're gonna stay away from this stuff at the bottom. We're just gonna go into load shader preset. And of course, we have our three categories here. We have our CG, which uh, Libretro recommends not to use. We have our GL SL, which seems to be the most commonly used ones for GL. And of course, slang. Slang, though, you're not really going to see too often. Uh, it doesn't seem to really have a lot of choices here. Like when I go into these shaders, most of these folders are empty. And there doesn't appear to be a place to download them. So I have a feeling these probably are, you know, pretty... Uh, pretty specific, you know. I mean, I'm, I'm going deep into some of these folders and I'm really not finding very much, so. But something to think about here too, these shaders can also be used to put an overlay of a, uh, like a handheld game screen, like a PSP or a GBA or whatever. So if you don't want Bezel Project or don't have Bezel Project, you know, you can try that also. But for now, let's go into our GLSL. And we're gonna look through. So there's so many different things here, and so many different categories of presets. Of course there's these, you know, bilinear and nearest, which I don't think those are really going to do a lot for us here. But if you look at the difference in this picture, it might not be too easy to see. But everything sure does look quite a lot smoother now, right? And that was a very simple change, just adding us one singular preset. It really made things look tremendously smoother. And the colors look better too. But let's keep on looking at what else we can do here because there are a lot of different options. And if you look, you can see there's some things filled in under here. Again, we're gonna ignore that for now. So we're gonna go back to our GLSL shaders. There's bilinear and nearest. So those are both you know, pretty nice, right? We go to nearest and look, we're back to a lot of pixels. Actually, it still looks pretty good, I think, but you know, very pixelated. So if we want, if we want to smooth out the pixels, what are we gonna do? Well, we'll go into our shaders, we'll go into our presets, we'll go into our GLSL, and we're going to look for different kinds of blurs. And it really just comes down to what your preference is, right? So you want to just try a few, like that's way too blurry, obviously. You know, you can't even see it, so it's kind of silly, right? Here's just a glow. So some of these shader presets are really nice. This one makes it glow, which is kind of cool. Why would you want to use that? That's up to you. It might be something that you're into. We have a cell shader. Makes anything you play look cell shaded. But now I'm just kind of playing. So let's say let's say we really wanted to make it look smoother, right? We could use an eagle shader. Like a super eagle. I used to use super eagle all the time back in the day on like nest not uh, what um Z-SNES. And look how nice and round and smooth all those pixels look. It's a big improvement if you're into that. But now if you're a real, you know, old school purist, you might hate this. You might think this is the most ugly thing you've ever seen and and say, oh my god, why would you do this? Why would you make these old games look, try to try make them look new like this? And blend the pixels? Ah, oh, terrible. So what are we going to do? We'll go back into our shaders and we'll grab a CRT shader. This is actually really cool. There's actually a whole bunch. You can do easy mode halation which makes it really look like, look at that. How cool is that? This makes this look a lot like an old school CRT monitor. In fact, I would say it even looks a little bit like an arcade screen. What else do we have under our CRTs? Hillian Glow, Hillian Multipass. What's that look like? I think that looks awesome. I'm not a big fan of scan lines in general. Like I'm not like the person that says, oh, you can't play these old games without scan lines. That's not really my preference, but I can definitely see how somebody might like this. It has a really cool vintage feel and it actually looks really nice. And I think part of why it looks really nice is because it does take some of the jagged edges off by having that look of those uh, kind of little lines passing through. So I think that's pretty cool. I mean, that's really all there is to shaders. It's not a really in-depth topic. Hey, so sorry to like piggyback on that, but uh, well, not. Uh, I, I forgot something kind of critically important, so I just wanted to touch on that real quick. So when you go into your shaders, and then you choose your preset, let's do my linear. 
Uh, you have to do this. You have to save. And you can either save it for the whole core or just for the specific game. I'm, I, I don't know how I managed to... Yeah, sorry, I forgot. <laughs> but yeah, that's kind of super important, so do that. You just got to find what, what you like. I mean, I'm having fun with this. This is kind of... Well, look at that. That looks weird, right? This looks like an old DOS game now. So one thing that you do have to bear in mind with shaders, though, uh, I have a very, you know, I have a pretty powerful PC here. Shaders are definitely going to take a toll on your processing power, and they're going to slow down your game. With something like this, I mean, I'm just playing Super Nintendo, so resource-wise, it's probably not going to be, you know, too much to worry about. But overall, it's something you're going to have to think about when you're playing around with the shaders. If you notice that your game's just running really slow, it just means that the shader is doing a lot of processing, and you're going to need to, uh, to tone it down a little bit. So as for me for right now, I think what I would like to do with these shaders, I think I would like to just go back to the parent directory here. Oh, too, too far back. <laughs> yeah, I would like to go to shaders. And I think I want to go back to that bilinear. I was enjoying that. I think that looks nice. So I'm going to stick with that. But of course, you know, what you like is your own preference. Totally up to you. Now, like I said before, there's a lot of stuff we can do in RetroArch. So we're going to visit a few more of these different things over the next few weeks uh, as I get deeper into the RetroArch tutorials. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope I didn't hem and haw too much. And if you did, please do subscribe, like the video, share it with your friends. And I also have gone back recently and I've been looking over a lot of my old videos. I've been adding chapters to them and um, and actually be adding info cards to a lot of the older videos. And you know what? A lot of them are pretty good. So check them out. Go take a look at some of my older videos. Uh, and let me know if you want to see that kind of scripted content again. And if you have any questions about emulation, any particular emulator settings, RetroArch, um, even, you know, going into like RetroPie or, you know, setting up on your mobile phone or whatever you have. Let me know. I'll be happy to address those in a future video. Until then, until next time, thank you very much for watching. Enjoy your games.